So let's look at some more examples of this. Right? Let's start off with this one, x to the ln of x. All right. Anytime you have a logarithm, you, you always have to be a little concerned about the domain of the function. Right? The domain of this thing is everything greater than 0 but not including 0. Because we can't take the logarithm of a negative number. You can't take the logarithm of 0. All right, so if I get critical values, for example, that are outside of that domain, cross them off, right? We're not going to be interested in them. The, the function can't have a maximum or minimum value at a place where it isn't even defined. All right, so now let's go to the derivative. f prime of x, I'm going to do product rule here, x times the derivative of the log of x plus the log of x times the derivative of x. All right, x times 1 over x plus the ln of x times 1. That's, let's see, these guys cancel. 1 plus the log of x. Where does this equal 0? Now let's move the minus 1 over. The log of x equals minus 1. Then I'll convert this to the exponential version of the equation. This is x equals e to the negative first. All right, so I'm going to draw a number line, right? And I'm going to go e to the negative first. And then I'm going to pick, let's see, uh, what, what is e to the negative first? Maybe we should go to the calculator on this one. Uh, this is the time when it, when it might, I'm going to have to pick a number on the left side. And I'm probably going to want to be a little careful about that. So 1 divided by 2.71828. This is 0 0.367. 0 0.367. So I'll, uh, on the right side, I'll pick 1. That's always easy to work with. Um, and what am I going to pick on the left-hand side? Well, look, you got to be careful, right? There, there's a, I, I don't want to pick a number that's outside of the domain. So I can, I, normally I'd probably pick zero, right? But I can't pick zero because zero isn't in the domain of the function. And for that matter, it's not in the domain of the derivative. All right, so what am I going to pick? Well, um, you could just grab a decimal. You could do uh, 0 0.3, for example. Boy, I'm, I'm going to approach this slightly different. I'm going to say let's do e to the negative second. Right? Made that, ne made that exponent smaller, more negative. Right? That's a number that's smaller than my original one, but still greater than zero. And I'm looking ahead. I'm saying, look, I'm going to have to take the logarithm of this thing. And I can take the logarithm of, of e to a power really easily. All right, so let, let's do this. What is f prime of 1? Well, this is 1 plus the log of 1, which is 1. That's greater than zero. So the function is increasing over here. What about e to the negative second? f prime of e to the negative second is 1 plus the log of e to the negative second. And now do you see why I picked that? The log of e to the negative second is negative 2. So this is 1 minus 2, which is negative 1. That's less than 0. It's decreasing. Decreasing to increasing, that's a minimum. So this function has a minimum at e to the negative first. And what is if I what is f of e to the negative first? Let me jump up here and work that out uh, if you didn't see it right away. f of e to the negative first is e to the negative first times the log of e to the negative first. The log of e to the negative first is negative 1. So this is negative e to the negative first. So you could say negative 1 over e. That's the version. Well, I, I stick with the negative exponent here. So let, let's say this is negative e to the negative first. That's where my minimum value is. Okay, how about this one? Right, how about this thing? Um, I don't know, let, let's see what's going on. Um, let's take the derivative, f prime of x. This is going to be a quotient rule. So I'm going to do 1 plus x squared times the derivative of 1 minus 1 times 
the derivative of 1 plus x squared all over 1 plus x squared squared. All right, so let's see the numerator. This is 1 plus x squared times the derivative of 1. That's 0. Minus 1 times 2x all over 1 plus x squared squared. All right, well, this first part, that just goes away. That's 0. So this is minus 2x over 1 plus x squared squared. Okay, so let's see where, um, where are the critical values. The numerator, negative 2x equals 0 when x equals 0. And the denominator, when does 1 plus x squared squared equals 0? We'll take the square root of both sides. 1 plus x squared equals 0. Move the minus 1 over. x squared equals negative 1. And now we're in trouble. When you're trying to take the square root of both sides, that's you get an imaginary number and it's calculus. We, we don't do imaginary numbers. It's all real numbers. So I get nothing from this one. So there's just one, just one critical value. Let's see what happens there. So I'm going to look at zero and I'm going to check, uh, get pick easy numbers. I'll pick one on the right side, minus one on the left. All right, so what is f prime of one? That's negative two times one over one plus one squared squared. That's negative two over four. That is a negative number. So the function is decreasing on the right side. Then on the left side, f prime of negative one is negative two times negative one over one plus negative one squared squared, which is positive two over four. That's greater than zero. So it's increasing here. So now think about what it's doing. It's increasing up to zero, decreasing on the other side. This is a maximum. So this function has a maximum at zero common. What, what is f of zero? f of 0 is 1 over 1 plus 0 squared, which is 1. All right, there's my maximum value. Okay, so how about this one? Now, now we've got a little trigonometry going on. This, this is one you can practice with if you like, if you'd like to stop this, um, see if you can't walk through it. We're going to have some repetition, right, that the periodicity is going to be a factor here. All right, so the first thing I need is the derivative. f prime of x is minus sine 2x times the derivative of 2x, which is minus 2 sine 2x. All right, when does this equal 0? Well, first, get rid of that minus 2. Divide both sides by the negative 2. Sine of 2x equals zero. Okay, when does the sine equal zero? The sine equals zero at zero, pi, two pi, three pi, and you do the negatives, any integer multiple of pi. So this equals zero when two x equals negative two pi, negative pi, zero, pi, two pi, and so on in both directions. All right, now let's divide by 2. So x equals negative pi, negative pi over 2, 0, pi over 2, pi, and so on. Okay, well, obviously, this is going to get... I'm a, a little busy. Just we're, we're gonna have to look at enough of these. Obviously, there's gonna be a pattern. You know what the sine function looks like, right? But I, I want to see how we discern that pattern by looking at the signs of the derivatives. All right. So let's let's put these numbers on here. All right. I'm gonna do negative pi, negative pi over two, zero, pi over two and pi. Hopefully that'll be enough. 
Okay, so I gotta pick numbers in between. Yeah. Okay. Um. How about? Uh, I'm just gonna go halfway between on each one. Negative pi over four, plus pi over four, negative three pi over four, positive three pi over four, negative five pi over four, and five pi over four. Okay. So where where was my derivative? My derivative was actually let, let me make a little table. Just try to be a little organized here. All right. So I'm gonna do x f prime of x, just because there's so many of these. So let's see, if I put um, negative 5 pi over 4 into the derivative, right? The derivative is, don't lose, don't jump to the sine 2x. That negative is going to be important. You got to go back to the original thing before we started uh, playing around with it. So I put negative 5 pi over 4 in here. This is negative 2 sine of negative 5 pi over 2, right? When I multiply by the 2 on the 2x, this is, let's see, uh, negative 5 pi over 2. Um, negative uh, 4 pi over 2 is negative, I'm doing this in my head, right, is negative 2 pi. So this is the same as negative pi over 2. And negative pi over 2 the sign is negative 1 times 2 is positive 2. All right, so my function is increasing on that interval. All right, so let's try the next one. Let's try negative 3 pi over 4. This is negative 2 sine negative 3 pi over 2. All right, sine of negative 3 pi over 2. That's the same as the sine of pi over 2, which is positive 1, times the negative 2 is negative 2. So it's decreasing here. And this point, negative pi, what, what is it doing? It increases and then decreases. So this negative pi is a maximum. All right, let's try the next one. Let's try negative pi over 4. This is negative 2 sine negative pi over 2. That is negative 1 again times negative 2 is positive 2. Good. This is what we expect, right? We expect the sine function to kind of alternate like this. So this is increasing. So at this point, we're going down and then up, and this is a minimum. All right, so let's, let's, try, let's try some more. All right, I, I know it gets a little tedious, but let, let's work out a few more of these. Pi over 4, that's negative 2 sine pi over 2, which is negative 2. Good, it's decreasing here. So we're going up and then down. Right? And this is a maximum. And hope, hopefully we're, we're starting to see the pattern here, but let, let's do one more, just kind of for completeness. Let's do f of 3 pi over, whoops, excuse me. This is the x coordinate. This is going to be 3 pi over 4. Negative 2 sine 3 pi over 2 is Excellent, positive two. It's increasing, so we're going down and then up. This is a minimum. Okay, awesome. So now um, I, I see what's going on, right? The maximum, let, let me, this one will be a maximum too. You can check five pi over four if you like. The maxima are occurring at the integer multiples of pi. Negative pi, zero, which is zero pi, pi, it'll happen again, 2 pi, 3 pi, and so on. So the maximum, the maxima, are at k pi, comma, and what are they? Well, look, there, there's no amplitude number out there in front. If you put any, if you put, uh, just test one, put pi in there. Cosine of 2 pi is 1 
So that's where the maximum is going to be. And then the minimum are at, where, where are those? Well, those are integer multiples of pi over 2, right? Negative 1 times pi over 2. Oh, no, we got to be careful, though, don't we? Uh, they're, they're not going to be. You see, this is why you got to be careful about stopping too early. The next one here will be 3 pi over 2. I knew I was in trouble because I, I started to say negative 1 times pi over 2, 1 times pi, and I realized I had to skip 0, right? 0 pi over 2 is not a minimum. That's 0, which is a maximum. Okay, so I need odd multiples of pi divided by... 2. So that's going to be, oh, let me get my color back, let me be consistent here. That's going to be 2k plus 1 pi over 2, comma, negative 1. And for both of these, k has to be an integer. Right? That's, that's, that's how I would express this, right? which is really kind of what I wanted you to see on this one. Obviously, you know where the maximum and minimum values of the function are. Uh, you, you, you took a trick class. But I, I wanted you to see really, really how, we, how we thought through handling multiple points first, and the second, how we wrote these out using that k, k pi, 2k plus 1 pi kind of notation. All right, so what's next? We're going to kind of continue this theme of finding a maximum and minimum value, but we're going to start doing it in terms of practical problems, right? We're, we're going to look at um, situations where we're, we have some constraints. We have like a cost function, and we know some limits on production and that kind of thing. And we're going to say, okay, what production level maximizes our profit, right? It's called optimization problems.